So a few hours ago Nintendo dropped a new mini trailer for the upcoming prequel to Breath of the Wild, Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. It seems to be the second in a series of trailers titled Untold Chronicles from a Hundred Years Past, the first being the small teaser of Robbie and Pura dropped a little over a week ago. But this one's a whole lot more interesting. We're getting a look at one of the most enigmatic groups in Breath of the Wild, the Yiga Clan. Not only does the trailer highlight Master Koga, the leader of the Yiga clan, but it also reveals two mysterious new characters. Badass, dual blade wielding Yiga warrior and an ominous cloaked individual. So subscribe if you haven't already for more Zelda content and let's break this trailer down. As with the trailer focusing on Robbie and Pura, this trailer begins with the same faded, film-like effect as Breath of the Wild's memories, coupled with the vertical lines of the Sheikah Slate's screen. We start with a shot of Master Koga, looking much the same as he did in Breath of the Wild, exclaiming, Look what you did! We know from the last gameplay session of Age of Calamity that Koga would make an appearance in this game, as we could see, for a split second, a shot of a boss symbol where the Yiga clan's hideout would be on this map, alongside the victory condition, Defeat Master Koga. So it isn't a surprise to see him here, but it's great regardless. An interesting point here is that, if this is the same Koga we fight during Breath of the Wild, then he must be well over a century old here. Yet, he doesn't seem to be. So either Koga somehow doesn't age, perhaps using Sheikah magic, or this Koga seen here in Age of Calamity is the ancestor of the one seen in Breath of the Wild. An idea which is supported by creating a champion, which suggests that the name Master Koga is passed down. Next, we leave Master Koga to get a look at some more Yiga, this time regular foot soldiers, which appear to be cornering our group of heroes. Link, Zelda, the Mystery Guardian, and some Hylian soldiers. This wouldn't make sense on its own, as Link could easily cut through these foot soldiers, but the next shot explains why the characters seem so distressed. There's a new villain in town. Literally, in town, he's standing on the tile roof of a house, a Yiga warrior who appears to be based on the Blade Master, the huge, muscular, wind cleaver wielding soldiers. But this one's different. He has two plumes atop his head and wields two great swords, which appear similar to the Wind Cleaver, but are perhaps more advanced versions. While the regular Wind Cleaver has three protrusions on the guard, these swords have four. Next, we see Link fighting this new Yiga, and get an up-close shot where we can see that his mask is cracked. This might mean that eventually we'll see his face unveiled, but for now, it's just decoration. The warrior does a backwards handspring into a backflip to put some distance between himself and Link, who we can see is now accompanied only by Zelda. As the Yiga lands, he vanishes into a puff of smoke, accompanied by the traditional talismans which appear when the Yiga and the Sheikah perform some of their techniques. Whether this warrior is fleeing the battle here, or just temporarily vanishing to reappear elsewhere, is unclear. Interestingly, in the background we can see the Great Plateau's main gate, placing this skirmish somewhere around the outpost ruins. This small town was situated just outside of the plateau, likely housing soldiers positioned to defend it. Following this, we return to Koga, who announces himself to be the stupendous chief of the Yiga clan. Next, one of the trailer's most interesting shots. We see Koga, hunched over a table, in front of the new Yiga warrior character. We can see from the background that this is within the Yiga clan hideout, but interestingly, on the left, we see a new character, shrouded in a dark cloak. The figure is holding up its hands, and just off screen there's something which is glowing purple, a colour obviously heavily associated with Ganon's malice in Breath of the Wild. Who this character is, and what they're doing, is something we'll come back to later. Before we see the hooded character again, we're treated to one of Koga's performances. The master dances, even under a spotlight, while surrounded by foot soldiers. Judging by what he says as he dances, is going to kill you all to death, it's likely the second part of the previous Koga scene, making the whole thing, the stupendous chief of the Yiga clan, Master Koga, is gonna kill you all to death which probably means this little performance is directed at some of our heroes, perhaps Link or Urbosa or both. 
Now the trailer fades to black and we get the most interesting part. In an area which appears to be the lost woods, judging from the colours, the dead trees and the fog, two Yiga foot soldiers kneel in front of the mysterious cloaked figure from earlier. If it wasn't clear earlier, where we had this character in the same room as Koga and the new Yiga warrior, this character is regarded as pretty important by the clan. And here we can see that the regular warriors of the defected Shika tribe answer directly to this new character. Now that we've got a better look, we can see some new details. For one, the character sports the Gerudo emblem on their back, perhaps a clue as to what race they belong to. We also get a better look at the object the character held in the Yiga clan hideout, glowing brightly, levitating above their hand. It took me a while to pinpoint what I think this thing could be, and I still don't have an exact match, but to me it looks like a giant ancient core, a rare part obtained from Guardians. Not only does this purple device feature the same gyroscope-like design, with two rings, we can see that the outer ring has cog-like teeth on the exterior, each tooth marked by a glowing U-shaped symbol. This is almost identical to the marks found on the giant ancient core. The main difference is being that the core's markings are all the same rotation, while this new device's markings alternate between facing up and facing down. Another difference is that the new device's inner ring is a lot thicker, featuring a protrusion on either side, while the core's inner ring is thin with no such additions. Finally, the glowing parts of the giant ancient core are far smaller than the glowing parts of this new device, so it's almost certain that they're not the exact same thing. However, the similarities are too numerous to ignore. I'm positive that this new device is ancient Sheikah technology, but it's not glowing the bright blue or burning orange of regular Sheikah tech. It's burning the hot purple of corrupted technology, like the guardians and divine beasts poisoned by malice. It's possible that these two scenes featuring this individual take place after Ganon's resurrection, and this simply is just part of some Sheikah technology possessed by malice, but I think it's far more likely that these scenes take place before the beast returns, and that this character, somehow, knows the secrets of how to use Sheikah technology against Hyrule. In the final shot of the trailer, we see this character open their eyes. I'm inclined to think that they're female, judging by what looks like eyeliner and a braid, but we can't be sure. What is clear is that they're almost certainly aligned with Ganon. They wear a jewel on their forehead, which features an unmistakable design. It's an eye of malice. Of course, since this trailer aired, the Zelda corner of the internet has exploded with speculation and ideas on who this mysterious new character could be. Because, for all the fantastic new stuff unveiled in this trailer, the return of Master Koga and the new Yiga warrior, this is the only element that's truly unknown. We know that the Yiga are evil, and having a badass new villain join their ranks for Age of Calamity will be brilliant, but it's overshadowed, for me, by the enigma of the hooded figure. Again, while we can't be sure at all on who this character is, not until we get more information or perhaps until the game itself comes out, I'm inclined to believe what seems to be the most commonly held opinion, that this is the fortune teller mentioned in Breath of the Wild's backstory. The fortune teller was a mysterious individual who, prior to the Great Calamity, served the royal family of Hyrule. They not only predicted that Ganon would return, but that the power to oppose it lies dormant beneath the ground, meaning the ancient Sheikah technology, which had been buried 10,000 years ago after Ganon was sealed. After this prophecy, the royal family ordered a search for these ancient weapons, and one by one, the divine beasts were discovered and excavated. Four mechanical titans, and the guardians too, mobile, automated tanks. This fortune teller is discussed rarely, but appears in many different tellings of the events leading up to the Great Calamity, such as creating a champion, Rome's cutscene, Rome's journal, and Zelda's diary. Creating a champion suggests that the fortune teller was a trusted advisor of King Rome, and without them, not only would Hyrule have not been aware of Calamity Ganon's imminent resurrection, but they would not have discovered the Sheikah relics either. But there's a popular fan theory regarding this fortune teller, because had Hyrule not known about the Sheikah technology, and was instead taken entirely by surprise by the return of Calamity Ganon, then the assault on the kingdom would have been ferocious. But 
Still, Hyrule boasted a powerful military, talented heroes such as Rivali and Urbosa, and of course, Link himself, wielding the Blade of Evil's Bane. It's impossible to say whether or not Ganon would have been victorious in this scenario, but it's certain that, had the fortune teller not predicted his return, Ganon would have not been able to corrupt the Guardians and the Divine Beasts, which would have remained dormant beneath the ground. This fortune teller, who clearly had the ability to see into the future, foresaw Ganon's corruption of the Sheikah technology and yet still advised the king to begin excavating for it. Many fans believe that this fortune teller might not have been a saviour from the shadows, but instead a saboteur, a character working for Ganon, who engineered Hyrule's defences against the beast with an ulterior motive providing the Calamity with the tools it needed to break the kingdom, the Sheikah weapons. If this theory is true, then it's a possible identity for the new cloaked individual, who possesses what appears to be a Sheikah artifact, corrupted with malice. This character may have researched the possibility of overriding the Guardian's programming with malice, before advising the king to excavate the technology. The Gerudo symbol on their back could suggest one of a multitude of possibilities. Perhaps this character is related somehow to Twin Rover, the surrogate mothers of Ganondorf. Their eyes appear to be amber in colour, which is a signature feature of the Gerudo tribe, but their skin isn't the tan colour we'd expect from a Gerudo. It's a pale, sickly green, and their hair is a light blonde, rather than the Gerudo's burning red. On the other hand, the forehead jewel is a classic Gerudo staple, worn by Ganondorf, Noboru, Riju, Urbosa and many others, further connecting this individual to the desert tribe. However, their cloak is very reminiscent of classic fortune tellers in Zelda, such as those found in A Link to the Past, as well as Aghanim himself, who was an alter ego of Ganon, appearing as an advisor to the royal family, but working in secret to ensure his own resurrection. It's possible that this character is the same tortured corpse we see in the teaser trailer for Breath of the Wild 2, but I heavily doubt it. Their hair isn't the same flowing mane of red, and I get the impression that this figure, almost certainly Ganondorf, has been sealed in this cave for a long time. Regardless of this though, we know that they're working with the Yiga clan. The character is seen planning with Koga and the new warrior, likely plotting the resurrection of Ganon. And, using the malice-tainted Sheikah artifact, the corruption of the Guardians and Divine Beasts too. Thanks for watching this video. What do you guys think of the new trailer and the new character? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, leave a like or subscribe if you haven't already for more Zelda content. Cheers guys, and I'll see you next time.